How should insulin on board be calculated differently with spontaneity? And if you don't know what insulin on board is, this video might not be for you. <laughs> this is specific to insulin dependent diabetes. Uh, I live with type one diabetes. And today I wanna to share a lesson with you that just might save your life, or at the very least save your time and range. Uh, I actually had an opportunity to join in a spontaneous adventure with my wife and daughter today to the pool with some family and uh, had just given a fresh dose of breakfast bolus insulin. So today I want to break down how I recalculated, made sure the insulin on board did not impact that activity, how not only did I not stay low, but I stayed between 80 and 94 for the entire duration of the event and go into a bit more of how I calculate these things in general life with diabetes. Diabetes. If you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I'm a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist living with type 1 diabetes. And today, I hope you find some value in this real life example from today. So without any further ado, let's get into our theme song and then jump into some diabetes math that I hope you find helpful. Let's get to it. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. This morning, my wife comes barging into my home office and uh, is just like, what are you doing right now? And I'm like, ah, I'm just getting through my uh, my team emails right now, just kind of getting ready for the day. What's going on? And she's like, my family has a cabana at the pool next to the beach. Do you want to go? And I'm like, let me double check my work real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go. Um, thankfully, I didn't have any uh, calls or meetings that were hard scheduled, just had some tasks to do. So I was like, all right, this would be an awesome opportunity to just slow down for a minute. And if you don't know, a lot of my life is very fast paced. You know, I'm training for triathlons. I'm writing. Well, I'm not going to tell you about that project yet, but I uh, get a lot of stuff done in the world of diabetes. And, you know, of course, raising my daughter, spending time with my wife. It's just, it's a fun mix of chaos. And so I thought, you know what, let's go to the pool for an hour or two. It'll be a blessing and uh, we'll get a chance to relax and I can take my daughter in the water, get her some practice because she's only 20 months old. Uh, we're still getting her used to water. So I have a quick glance at my, uh, my insulin pump it shows that I've got 3.2 active units of insulin on board now if you don't know what that is insulin on board simply means that it's insulin that's still in circulation right so if i am going to um, eat food as a diabetic that has carbohydrates fats and or carbs or uh, proteins there we go i have to consider all of that and take insulin for it because my body does not produce insulin naturally right now in that calculation there has an insulin to carb ratio we're going to get into some diabetes math right now so just Bear with me. So these are all things that go through our heads every day as diabetics, right? And so I've taken a specific amount of insulin to balance out the specific amount of carbs that I had for breakfast. And of course, if you've been following me for a while, you know that we're also considering fats and proteins and fibers in our dosing decisions as well, right? As I have done frequently. Uh, now with this insulin on board, insulin still in circulation, I like to view it as the potential to drop right the potential of a lower blood sugar and as i glanced at my blood sugars to see you know where i was sitting i was at 98. now with zero context 98 is a fantastic blood sugar number love it i mean non-diabetic essentially right especially considering i had just had a large breakfast uh, now what you want to consider with insulin on board or what i want to consider right because this is not medical advice i should have said that at the beginning nothing i say is medical advice don't listen to me i'm probably crazy right go talk to your doctor or whatever uh but what i consider is the potential quote unquote threat of insulin on board and the balancing of my diabetes math equations so hypothetically the 3.2 insulin units that were left on board are still in circulation right still doing its thing should hypothetically be balanced out by the amount of food that i consumed for breakfast so sitting at my desk, everything's fine and dandy, right? We're good to go if I'm at my desk. Now, why does that matter? 
Now, there's a lot more that goes into this equation, right? That's why we talk about blood sugar formulas all the time. In fact, if you don't know what blood sugar formulas are, I use a specific one called the 80-20 blood sugar formula. It's how I predict stable blood sugars. It's exactly what I use this morning uh, on a, a larger scale. If you don't know what that is or you're curious about it, I'll drop something in the show notes or in the description. You can go click on that and check it out. All right. Now, what I want to consider in this whole equation that I've got going on is that at my desk, my heart rate is lower. There's no expenditure of energy. I don't have to worry about that insulin board working in an instant, right? What I do have to worry about is if the calculation at the beginning was wrong, like if my insulin to carb ratio was incorrect. And there are specific ways you can identify that, but we're not gonna get into that in today's episode. What I now have to consider is this spontaneous activity, right? So we're not just gonna go to the pool and sit. I mean, I have a 20 month old daughter who is very active. She takes after her parents. <laughs> and so when we're considering going to the pool, it's the walking, it's the chasing, if I'm being honest, right? I'm gonna chase her around because she's gonna wanna go everywhere. Uh, the swimming, right? There's a, a water slide there. I know we're going on that. I'm gonna take her down her first water slide. So I'm like, all right, this 98 probably isn't gonna level out at 98 with that much insulin on board, even though my insulin to carb ratio is correct, right? So with this new variable, I have to consider how this might impact me and I have to plan ahead so that when I get to the pool, I can be present with my family, right? Cause it's not just my wife and my daughter, it's also my in-laws and my wife's cousins and their kids, it's a whole thing, right? And it's gonna be a blast. So I want to be present at the pool. I wanna make sure that I'm able to give my best to my daughter who's gonna be enjoying water slides for the first time in her life and getting in the pool and you know tossing her around and having fun. So how do I calculate the initial impact of the insulin on board with a spontaneous activity? Now, the reason I want you to understand how to calculate this is that this specific scenario used to get me into so much trouble with diabetes because before I knew that this was a thing, insulin on board and all that, because I used to be you know on shots, I, I just had uh, syringes and vials when I first got diagnosed, a glucometer, there were no CGMs, there's no fancy insulin pens or insulin pumps or algorithms. It was very manual, right? And so with that, I had no idea what insulin on board was. It was not a common topic. And so there were plenty of situations where I would eat and then go to the pool and then go dangerously low. You're like, what the heck just happened? And then you go to the endocrinologist or the doctor and they're like, oh, that's just how diabetes is sometimes. And you're like, this sucks. <laughs> well, why do I have to deal with this? There's gotta be a better way. And the truth is there was a better way, but I had to discover it for myself. No one was teaching me the things that I now teach my clients. It's just not common practice, unfortunately. So without diving off into the deep end of what a blood sugar formula is or how to balance out your equations or predict blood sugars, the first thing that changed my life dramatically in approaching insulin on board and spontaneous adventure or activity or plans that just weren't expected, right? Which is what spontaneity is, is to understand that insulin on board can be viewed as this potential threat or this potential drop. And if I see it as the potential total drop and then prepare for that, I can be so much more present and confident in my diabetes management, right? So using this example, we're gonna use some made up numbers too to make the math easier. But the 3.2 active units of insulin on board that I had, we're gonna use that example. And assuming that I have an insulin to carb ratio of one to 10, I don't, but the math is just easier that way. Um, and if you don't know what an insulin to carb ratio is, a one to 10 just means that for every 10 carbs that I consume, I need a unit of insulin. So if I wanted to have 30 carbs, I would need three units of insulin in this example, which is made up and not medical advice, <laughs> okay? Uh, but in this example, 3.2 units of active insulin on board would then translate, if we you know, reverse engineered it, to about 32 carbs, right? 3.2 times 10, the one to 10 insulin to carb ratio, right? So 3.2 times 10 is 32. You just move the decimal point one place over. That's why I chose easy math, right? <laughs> just for the sake of example. So if that were my insulin to carb ratio, I could then assume that I would need roughly 32 grams of carbohydrates to quote unquote, cancel out 
that insulin on board if things got dicey, right? So if blood sugar started plummeting while I was in the pool, I would know that the amount of insulin still in circulation equaled about 32 grams of carbs. Now, quick caveat and a thousand medical disclaimers on all of this. Everyone is different. Your insulin to carb ratio is different. Your insulin sensitivity is different. The time of day impacts this, the types of activities. Are you stressed out? Maybe you're scared of drowning and that's gonna spike your cortisol and maybe you go high and not low, right? So many factors that have to be considered, but at a base level, a foundation, I want you to understand this really simple concept because if you can implement this in your life, you will at the very least be prepared or more prepared to treat any drops in blood sugar from insulin on board, one being spontaneous. So take the insulin on board, you look at your insulin to carb ratio, figure out how many carbs would it take if all of that insulin on board decided to just plummet my blood sugars right now, right? So if I had taken 3.2 units of insulin, I would need 32 grams of carbs to offset that, right? Now, just real quick, because I know there's gonna be a thousand questions in the comments about this, Contextually speaking, there are more variables at play, like the fact that I ate breakfast, which was more than 32 carbs, <laughs> and did account for the 3.2 units of insulin on board. So now I'm going to try to geek out too much over this because I love talking about blood sugar analytics and you know interpreting CGM graphs and all this. But understanding that now it's a battle of the digestion speed of what I consumed for breakfast versus the circulation speed of active insulin on board and how those timelines are going to either line up or differ with the introduction of spontaneity, right? So sometimes no action is taken, right? Sometimes there are days where I've got seven units on board and then a spontaneous adventure comes into play and I'm like, cool, no food is necessary to balance this equation because of X, Y, Z factors that are also at play. But at a base, lows, pose a more potential threat in this circumstance where you've got insulin on board and activity and all that. So in order to be more prepared, what I have done in the past is taken the insulin on board, calculated at that moment, and then packed enough snacks to balance that equation out. So in this made up example of a, a one to 10 insulin to carb ratio, that means that for every one unit of insulin on board, I would need 10 carbs to balance the equation. Right, so with 3.2 units, that's 32 carbs. Does that make sense? <laughs> I really hope it does. And you know what? If this is something that you're like, oh my gosh, light bulb moment, this is making too much sense. I really like the idea of diabetes math. I didn't know you could calculate stuff. Fun fact, all of diabetes is a giant math equation. It, that's it. It's a series of different equations lined up in sequential form all that need to be balanced out your insulin your activity your stress your hydration your sleep all of these things are math equations which sounds threatening to some people and fun to others for me just so you know i get a lot of questions like i don't know if this would work for me i'm really bad at math and i'm like i failed math in college <laughs> i actually had to retake the class and i'm the guy that now promotes diabetes math that talks about blood sugar formulas so if i can do it I promise you, we can get you through it, right? It's something we can actually work through and set up with you, which is why we have coaching programs that help you set up these formulas next to you, side by side, right? But understand that it goes so much deeper than this. As a surface level, just rule of thumb, this is a great way to be prepared. You know, people ask me, well, how many carbs should I bring with me to the pool? I'm like, well, let's think about how much insulin is on board as a starting point. Right. But at the very least, this will give you an idea of what you can do to better prepare for spontaneous activities with insulin on board. This is your baseline so that you can start getting out there and enjoying more of life. OK, and that's what I want for you. I want stable blood sugars and happiness. Those things can coexist. I used to think you could either be happy by ignoring your blood sugars or you could hyper focus on blood sugars, but then not be happy. Like th that was the the two choices that I gave myself for the first 10 years or whatever, living with diabetes, turns out you can have both. You can have stable, healthy blood sugars and healthy and happy life, right? So the big goal, healthy and happy. Now that's only possible with blood sugar formulas because you get as close to automation as possible with 
the blood sugars, which allows you to be more present in life like I was today at the pool. And uh, I'll throw a picture up right here. If you're on YouTube with me, this is a little family pic right before I took Brooklyn down her first water slide ever. And her face, I don't have a picture of it, but her face lit up. I snuck a little peek. I looked in it because she was sitting in my lap as we went down. Oh, she was so excited. She was nervous too. Full disclosure. She was like, I don't know if I want to. Uh, which really just means she said no. <laughs> I encouraged, I was like, you sure? Let's try it. And she said, okay. Uh, we got down it. And the second we hit the water, she looks at me and goes, more, more, more. I was like, that's my girl. I love it. So we had a blast. And it's all because of blood sugar formulas enabled me to be more present in the moment because I could make a quick calculation before getting out there that enabled me to be spontaneous and not worry about the blood sugars. Now, again, I come to toss this shot, this uh, CGM shot up as well. So if you're on YouTube with me, this is what my blood sugars look like. We took off right in the middle there. You can kind of see where it dipped into 98. So I had a little bit of a spike from uh, my breakfast, went to like 140. And then, and by the way, it's like 90 carbs. You can eat carbs and still have stable blood sugars too. That's a different discussion though. But this is what blood sugars look like. As you can see, it went to 98 and cruised between 80, I think it was like, 81 and 96 the whole time we were there. Uh, there was a, a very specific strategy I followed and at a baseline, it's what I just walked you through to get me going, to have that initial strategy. And then from there, uh, I talked to my clients about, you know, glucose burn rates, your activity impact ratios, your macronutrient profiles. We get deep into it. I love geeking out on the science behind it, but at the very least, I hope this gives you a little more confidence in your decisions to be spontaneous when considering insulin on board. And if you have not considered insulin on board yet, that's probably why you're seeing big drops in blood glucose surrounding activity. I would encourage you to think about that the next time you want to be active. All right. So hope this was helpful. Uh, I really do. This is what I obsess on. I love this stuff. So if you've got questions, I'd love to see in the comments. If you've got uh, different topics you'd like to see us cover that as well. Obviously hit subscribe if you're new here because we put videos out every single week on a variety of type 1 diabetes topics. And I got some really fun, kind of insane challenges and updates for you guys in the next couple of weeks. Uh, something that I signed up for that I'm a little bit nervous about, but also very excited to share with you. So thanks so much for hanging out. Hit that subscribe button, leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys. And uh, as always, I hope you get the most out of life and keep up the fight. Oh, and if you're on YouTube with me, you're going to love this video next. Just go ahead and tap on that one and you'll be to take you right over to watch it. All right. So have a great day. See you guys next time. Bye.